Here with, uh, from Cisco Systems, uh, Dennis Brezzo, who's the Senior Manager for Packet Tracer, uh, Isak Meshirowitz, uh, the Product Manager, and Mark Chen, who's the Lead Software Engineer. How are you guys doing? Very well, good, Doug. Thank you. Th thanks for coming. Uh, we just had a great presentation. You guys are doing some really neat stuff. Now, Dennis, uh, I thought I'd ask you some uh, question initially about the history of Packet Tracer. How did it start? It started as a visualization tool uh, to help instructors uh, maybe save some time in what they had to draw on the whiteboard or the blackboard in terms of packet transit across a simple routed network. And then we started to say, well, it would be nice if you could visualize uh, any network that someone conceptualized, not just a fixed network. And it grew over the years to include the simulation, uh, iOS and protocol simulation, and now collaboration. But it, fundamentally, at its roots, was a visualization tool. But the simulation is what allows us to do interesting yeah, it's a very, uh, very powerful product. Now, you've, you're developing this community of practice, and we're really interested in that. That's part of our work with the NSF, uh, along with NPIC's work. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yes, so we've been so fortunate over the past decade of the Academy's growth that we have roughly 8,000 institutions teaching very similar courses. So if you think about the instructor's experiences of teaching those courses uh, and the experiences of their students in those courses, it's very much a latent community of practice already. And um, in different regions of the world, that community is very well integrated and sharing and benefiting from each other's wisdom. But on a global scale, what we're really intrigued about is what might it look like to have you know, all 8,000 sites and the instructors and the students interacting in a more Web 2.0 fashion around the teaching and learning of networking. That's really neat. You've got, you, you threw out a number, you figure you got about a million users, right? I think so. Wow. That's incredible. Now, um, what is this community? You're looking for develop a community practice of co-developers, right? And what do, you, what do you see them doing? What, do you, what are your thoughts? Um, incremental improvements in the software to benefit instruction. So, you know, there's a lot of clever ideas. Some are very small, like just make me a little grading utility. Some are medium-sized, like let's use Packet Tracer to give uh, more uh, practice exams. And some are very large, like let's make a massively multiplayer game. And all of these projects, we think, are somewhat amenable to a community of co-development where good ideas are coming in, and then we can do a matchmaking function and find people in the ICT uh, community, not necessarily just the academy community, but the broader mission of MPICT uh, really struck us as a, a wonderful forum for this, because we don't just need people with great ideas on how to teach networking, but we also need implementers, people that can write code, and so we think there's a wonderful synergy to explore there. Now, you, you talked about uh, three things, simulation, visu visualization, and then collaboration. Could you talk a little bit about that model? Okay, so the, the initial genesis of the idea was uh, t helping uh, teachers uh, present uh, important visual, conceptual and visualization of networking uh, protocol behavior, right? How does a, a packet get encapsulated and decapsulated as it traverses a network? So that was the, the origin. Uh, we did research and we're really influenced by, in the computer science pedagogy field, uh, work in what's called algorithm visualization. And some of the conclusions coming out of that work were, instead of just telling people an algorithm or uh, so showing them multimedia about an algorithm, have them try and construct the algorithm. And even though their first attempt might not be the actual best or optimized algorithm, that this process of constructing algorithms and representing them was a very effective way to teach classic algorithms of computer science. So there was this body of research in computer science pedagogy, and we looked into that and said, well, we think that really, you know, networking's very close cousin. And, you know, what are the types of what if questions that student asks? So if you give them a micro world where they can build networks and ask what if questions and do their own experimentation, isn't that more powerful than, say, just giving them preset networks and saying, hey, this is how this works. So the, the simulation comes in is, at some point, your visualiz visualization is only as good as the underlying simulation of the protocols. So if your IP uh, packets don't have a, a time to live field modeled, then you're not going to get such interesting visualizations. So over time, our IP models, our TCP models, our application layer models, and our layer two models have all gotten gradually better. They're still not a substitute for the real equipment, but it's a very powerful, especially at the level of beginning learners that we deal with, it's a powerful medium, malleable and flexible. Could you talk a little bit about uh, your, your concept, this network city concept? 
Okay, so this is a marketing prototype um, that we built uh, and we've shown to various people around the world for the last three or four years. Um, and the idea is a strategic simulation game. That's the genre it would be classified as. It was inspired by SimCity, which several members of our team just love. Uh, and the idea is to have um, individuals or teams of students uh, interact in a network city space where they're bidding on networking contracts to provide services to different businesses in the city. And then out of that, or in the back end of that network city space is Packet Tracer because to fulfill the contract, to earn money, to earn uh, prestige and move up in the game, uh, you would have to complete networking tasks. And you know, there's a question we often ask ourselves, what's the difference between a really good performance assessment and a really deep uh, game? Not a lot. So you can imagine just dreaming for a second, maybe someday the way you get certified in networking is you master this game because you're so good. The game has enough fidelity and reality to it that you master the game and okay, you win and we think you really know something about networking. Are we, yeah, I love that, that's, that's fantastic. <laughs> Now, now, Mark, I want to ask you a few questions. First of all, I want to ask you a little bit about your background. I know you were one of the original uh, Cisco Network Academy students. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, I started, um, actually, Dennis is my um, instructor for the Cisco Networking Academies back when I was in Tokyo Marshall, one of the first academies that came out. He's also my physics teacher back really? then, too. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, so, but my background is in uh, software engineering. Um, after I took the networking courses, I always was into computer science, um, but you know, networking was a pretty good opportunity. So I continued as a software engineer at uh, Cal Poly, and I graduated um, with a computer engineering degree. Okay. Great. Great. And uh, did you start right at Cisco, right out of school? Uh, actually, you know, um, I started during school in high school. Oh, Mark, Mark <laughs> was a never teaching left. assistant <laughs> in high school for yeah. the Cisco Academy, and then was an intern and then moved as a contractor and then as a full-time employee. So in some sense, he's been working for Cisco in some capacity since 1998. Wow, wow, that's fantastic. Now, um, you just demoed uh, some of the, uh, the uh, Packet Tracer external applications. And uh, you mentioned things like um, Second Life uh, mods, uh, Counter-Strike mods. Could you tell us a little bit about those? So these are other games. Um, so the idea is, um, now that we have the Packet Tracer engine that's open um, for other people to use, and there are other systems that are actually um, also open. Now, these other things like these game engines that do come out with Second Life, um, you can do a lot of soft type of skills in there. You have little chat rooms and you can build your own little world. But um, what if you can connect it to a networking world? Um, so you can merge, kind of like mash up, if you're familiar with the Web 2.0 terms, yeah. mash up these different technologies and um, have the ability um, to make the best of the both worlds. So it's, it's, uh, that's, that's what it really is.